Alrighty guys, welcome to part two of my Hunter build. Today we're going to be working on the Ricasso shoulders and fitting the guard. I'm going to be using my mini mill to mill in my shoulders. So step one is to get my vise mounted and squared up to the spindle. To make this operation easier, I first draw temper or blue back the tang and Ricasso. I'm shooting for a straw color at the front of the Ricasso and I'm keeping the cutting edge submerged in fluid so as not to soften it. Once I have the file guide attached, I placed a whole assembly in my vise on some parallels. Since the knife is a long ways on the table, I can use one of my table stops to get the max depth that my shoulder is milled into the Ricasso set. I then get to work with a one quarter of an inch carbide end mill. I've used eighth of an inch end mills for this work in the past, but I feel like they are not rigid enough. For my next project, I was thinking of trying out the happy medium of a 3 16ths of an inch end mill, so stay tuned. I mill in the shoulders on both sides and back cut the tang about 5 thousandths of an inch on one side before flipping the entire assembly around and back cutting the other side. I'll admit here that I'm not 100% sold on this milling operation process. This method worked for me here, but I've had it yield wonky results in the past, which I think are due to the flipping of the assembly and device and the potential for my milling skills not being within tolerance. I will continue to play around with creating my own standard operating procedure for getting these shoulders in just right and will obviously report back to y'all when I do. After I get the milling done, I go to the 2x72 to remove the bulk of the excess material. You can see here that I have a step milled in about a quarter of an inch away from my back cut to aid in guard fitting. I scribe some lines based on this step's thickness and thin down the rest of the tang to match it. To accomplish this, I'm using a 1-2-3 block as a push stick. This helps me keep the tang nice and square on the platen when removing this material. While we're at the grinder, I decided to grind in a little false edge on this knife. I laid out a center line and used my eight inch contact wheel to get it ground in at around 52 degrees. This operation was relatively painless and the grinder in the horizontal position here allows me to get a pretty nice machine finish. I worked the false edge up to a 320 grit belt before hitting it with a 400 grit cork belt. Next up before starting with the guard fit, I'm going to be hand sanding the blade. If you hand sand after fitting your guard, the slight reduction in material can actually affect your fit. It shouldn't be an issue since we back cut the Ricasso, but I didn't want to take any chances. I started with a 320 grit paper at an angle, then worked up to a 600 grit finish. We'll be going higher a little later, but I felt like this was a good spot to stop before fitting the guard. This also felt like a good time to etch in my maker's mark. I'm using my DIY etching machine on DC power to put in a nice deep etch into the Ricasso. I'm going to be using a slightly larger version of my maker's mark on this blade, so let me know what y'all think. I feel like this size is appropriate for this style of knife, but that's just me. This etching machine really does a nice job on the maker's mark, and I want to thank Chris Crawford for sharing the plans for making it on his website. Now it's time to start on the guard. I'm going to be using a one half inch chunk of stainless steel, which I'm pretty sure is 316. In future projects, I'm going to try out some 416 stainless since I've heard it's easier to machine and finish. I like to square up the guard on all six sides before getting started on the slotting. This takes a little more time, but it's nice to be working with a square and parallel piece. I did the bulk of this work with my one and one half inch carbide inserted face mill, and then I did the sides with a one half of an inch carbide end mill. The 3990 mini mill from littlemachineshop.com ate up this job easily. With the block squared, we can now take some measurements from our knife. I start off by measuring the thickness of the area where we're going to be fitting, which is the back cut on the Ricasso. It's around 167 thousandths of an inch. I then measured the approximate width of the tang and got around 736 thousandths. I do a little math and then scribe the slot on the face of the guard. This really isn't necessary since I'll be milling in the slot, but it's nice to have those layout lines on the block just for reference. I start off by indicating the side of the block in the mill and then moving to the center. Using the edge finder in my mill is something I just started doing since installing my digital readout, and it's been super handy. With a large quarter inch end mill, I start milling the back of my guard. This is going to be the recessed area of my slot and will not be involved in the fitting process. I mill down towards the face of the guard with this oversized end mill and leave about 50 thousandths of an inch to actually fit later. You can see me using my new DIY table stops to set the top and bottom of the guard slot dimension. By doing this, I don't have to pay attention to these limits when milling the slot, and it greatly increases the speed of this operation. I'm taking small bites on the Z-axis, then moving to the other side of the slot. 
This process is repeated until I get to my target depth. Once I get to that target depth, I swap out the quarter inch end mill with an eighth of an inch end mill and go all the way through, giving me a one eighth of an inch slot. Since the section that we are fitting is 167 thousandths of an inch thick, we're going to have to do some math to enlarge this slot. To figure out the amount of material we have to take off of each side of the slot, we will take the width of the tang we're trying to fit, minus the size of the end mill, and divide that number in half. This gives me a target of 21 thousandths of an inch per side. Using my DRO, I move the table along the Y axis to approach this 21 thousandths of an inch. If you don't have a DRO, you can also do this with the dials on your handles or a dial indicator on your table. Once I get one side nailed down, I move the Y axis in the opposite direction to get the other side. This will yield a slot that is almost exactly the same size as the tang we're fitting. When fitting my guards in the past, I have used a crude guard punch made out of an old pipe. I decided to take this piece of scrap steel and upgrade my guard punch. All I did was cut long pieces and welded them together in a rectangle with a cap on the end for clean and square hammer blows. Now we can start fitting the guard. Hopefully, if we did our job right, this won't be too bad since we're only fitting 50 thousandths of the guard to around a quarter of an inch of the tank. As you can see here, we're pretty darn close from the start. Now the name of the game is squaring off the corners of our slot in order to match the tank. You can see the face of my guard has indents where the square corners of my tang cut into the rounded corners of the guard. Using a safe ground file, we can square these off. Even though I was pretty close from the start, this process of filing then checking my fit did take a while. Each time I got a little closer to having a gapless square fit. Caffeine and deep breaths are a must with the guard fitting process for sure. While this method of back cutting the Ricasso is pretty popular, I'm thinking I may revert back to the straight press fit technique on some of my next knives. I've been re-watching some of Nick Wheeler's videos and he doesn't back cut his Ricasso. There are a lot of methods here so I'm guessing I'll bounce around a few more times before finding a standard operating procedure that works great for me. Experimentation is the nature of knife making and I wouldn't have it any other way. Now that we have a good fit, I'm going to remove some material in the troil area of the guard. To get the bulk of the stainless out of the way, I use my bandsaw and then clean it up with my 2x72 in the horizontal position and a small wheel. Next we're going to be shaping the profile. To do so evenly, I cut out a small template from thin stock. This template is one half of the front profile of the guard. I've seen this template and scribe method used by the likes of Kyle Royer and Nick Wheeler, so I know it's a rock solid technique to getting a symmetrical guard. I hammer the guard back on the knife and then use my template to scribe in the profile, remove the guard from the knife, rough cut the profile on the bandsaw, and finally grind my profile in a 2x72 up to a 320 grit finish. On this knife I wanted to try something new in the guard and bend it a little. I used my torch to heat up the tip of the guard and then a crescent wrench to bend it towards where the handle will be. This worked out pretty good. This is how our guard turned out. In the next video I'm going to be finishing up this knife by slotting the handle block, creating a finial on the lathe, installing some alignment pins, fine finishing the blade and handle, and then assembling it all together. As always, I hope y'all are getting something out of this build. I'm learning as I go here, and if y'all find value in watching the process, please let me know in the comments. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.